Let's um talk about some dog bane. Uh, Applocinum cannabinum um, is the Latin name, and it's fall here, and um, essentially it's about time to harvest it. And uh, this is what it looks like for the most part when it's going into its dormant state, or when it has gone into its dormant state um, after the first frost. Um, it looks very similar to milkweed, um, although it does have some medicinal properties. Um, dogbane is considered toxic, and at its young stage, it's really too, really easy to confuse um, dogbane with with milkweed, um, unless you know, definitely know the differences. Um, milkweed is an edible plant; it is also considered toxic as well. But um, you can catch the shoots when they're between three to six inches tall. Um, and cook them up like asparagus, they're really tasty, and then as well as the seed pots when they're really early. Um, but again, uh, you got to kind of know what you're doing so that you make sure you don't poison yourself and get confused between the two plants, um, dogbane and milkweed. But right now we have a dog, a dogbane plant um, stock here that we're going to make cordage out of. Dogbane is really known um, for its cordage properties. Uh, it creates um, very good and strong cordage. Um, it's also known as American hemp, and uh, it was used to make baskets, um, bow strings. Um, it's just really, you know, uh, clothing. It's just a really good and versatile plant for that reason. I have some dog vein cordage here um, that I extracted and I twisted. Um, here, it's it's very strong. And, you know, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm unable to really break it even at an extended length. It's very, very strong cordage. Um, so I'm going to show you how to extract the cordage. I want to thank um, uh, primitive technologist uh, Dino Labiste. He's got a few videos on dog bane and how to extract the cordage, and I'm just going to basically be um, more or less regurgitating what uh, he has shown. So essentially, once you've harvested the plant in early fall, uh, you can go ahead and snip it at the bottom here, and at the top it wants to splay out into different branches. Um, at the top of the splay here, you want to go ahead and just kind of break that off. And there's not really much here that you can extract, okay? And then what you want to do is, you from from this point on, you can pretty much extract it by squeezing the stalk together like so. all the way down to the root and then you can split it off and it wants to split into four quarters or essentially or essentially to pass and the easiest way to extract this is with my fingertips up is to pop off the uh, stem and pull the skin or the bark up and then down and then break off just like so. This is real quick. Just breaking this off. And then here we've got some cordage. It's still got the skin on, but right now this can be twisted and be ready for use as is. However, it's been suggested that you go ahead and you scrape the outer chaff or the outer bark off. So I have another piece here, another stem. Again, I'm just going to take these two uh, branches off and I'm going to break off where it starts to branch out. And you can use um, I have a piece of chert here in my pocket with a sharp edge here, and you can kind of, you can scrape the chaff off, keeping the edge perpendicular to the surface of the stalk, and just scraping off, okay? You can see that the fuzzies of the um, fibers starting coming up. I don't want to press too hard because I don't want to violate the fibers. Now, you can, this is a primitive way to do it with a, um, an edge tool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull out my... Um, my modern tool, which is a steel knife, and again, the, the process is the same. I'm just going to scrape 
in one direction, like so. And again, you want to be very careful not to press too hard. sure to keep the knife at a 90 degree angle and then I'm going to flip with the other side and again notice I'm scraping in one direction this results in cleaner fibers again uh, making use of everything uh, what is discarded can be used in a tender bundle um, for later use for making fire. So it's good to kind of keep track of the byproducts that are created when you're doing certain projects and crafts. Alright, so I've pretty much got this scraped off. And the next thing is you go ahead and you squeeze it to break it. The stem is hollow and it wants to split into four pieces. Break it down all the way to the end. And then if I can, go ahead and just split it in half and open it up. Okay. Just like so. Okay. And then what you get is here, this one again with my fingertips up. I'm going to crack and pull away the uh, stem to expose the fibers of the bark and pull out and down. Okay, that, gives, that should get four sections. Go down a little further here to get more of the stems. Pull out. Pull the fibers out and down. Out and down. Break away the stem out and down. Like so. Just break this away. You can start to see the fibers it's creating. Just, uh, dog veins really, really strong. It produces really long fibers. Actually, um, they say it's, it's stronger than cotton. So, next to uh, sinew, it's going to be your strongest natural fiber. After that, they say that milkweed produces also fibers that are next in line for the strongest. And then after that would be nettles. And I'm partial to nettles. Uh, nettles seem to be more common in my area. So they're more abundant. I was able to come up on this dog bane stand kind of a few miles away from here. And I went out and harvested a bunch. Okay, not pulling up the roots, just snipping up the tops after it already seeded. Just to make sure it comes back again next year. See, I'm getting the fibers here. Breaking this off, combing this out, like so. And in the videos that Dino Labiste produced, he's actually moved it to his yard. So he's actually cultivating it in his yard, which, I don't know, that would be pretty cool to be able to do. That way you always have it on hand when you need it. Essentially, this is the cordage that it produces. I have a bunch here. I'm just going to add to. It's really fine and fibrous. I'll just go ahead and just add that to my pile. Like so. 
So I've got some other videos on how to twist this into cordage. Um, so please check those out. And for the most part, this is essentially the cordage or the fibers that Dogbane produces. It also smells pretty good too. It's got a nice little um, fragrance to it. Really fine fibers.